Find your magic this season. This is the time of autumn. It's the time of winter. It is the time of inwardness. Get out of the rigidity, get out of the scarcity, get out of the need and go through these steps in community with us and find your magic. From To Be Magnetic, this is The Expanded Podcast with your host, Lacey Phillips. And your host, Jessica Gill. As the leading destination for neural manifestation, we dispel the woo-woo in order to help you create real, tangible results based on neuroplasticity, psychology, epigenetics, and energetics. Our goal is to normalize the practice of manifestation and empower you to get into the driver's seat of your life in order to manifest the experiences, relationships, and things that most align with your authenticity. And by pressing play, the process begins. Welcome back everyone to another episode of Expanded. Jessica here. We are about to kick off week one of the Manifestation Challenge for 2023. I'm so excited to be in community with you all going through this work. We're gonna cover a bunch of stuff on the podcast. We're going to be covering so much in our monthly check-in calls. We're sharing on Instagram, my Instagram, the TBM Instagram, the community group, tune in. We have our biggest sale of the year going on right now. So if you are at any phase with this process, if you're brand new to manifestation, or if you've been doing manifestation Work for a while and really looking to have an intentional space to go step by step and manifest your dream life in 2024. Join us. We have the lowest rates of the season going on. You can save up to $96 on your membership. It's a really beautiful time to go inward, to reflect. And in today's episode, Lacey and I are diving into really reading and understanding the patterns that are presenting in our life, becoming self aware to them understanding what they mean, what they're trying to say, and really getting clear on what the universe is asking us to learn. What is it asking us to integrate? What is it asking us to let go of? What is it asking us to feel so we can align with our whole authentic, worthy selves? This is also really in par and in theme with week one of this challenge where we're going to take you on this inventory exercise to really understand who our authentic self is and have a moment to really process this year and journal out and look at what has come up this year. Where am I at? What do I want? Who am I at this season? What do I want next that feels good for my soul? And so before jumping into this episode, I wanted to take a quick self-awareness check-in and just have you all ground into your bodies while you're listening to this, wherever you are in the world, whether you're on a walk, on a commute to work, just listening in your home, just take inventory of the space around you and find something in your space that gives you comfort. When you look at it, it brings ease to your body. It brings calm. Take a deep inhale through your nose. And let out a long sigh. And shake out any expectations, preconceived notions, rigid thinking. And let's open up our mind. Let's open up this portal for this manifestation challenge this year to really sit in community, to see each other and be there for each other. And to see ourselves and our desires, to stop putting it on the back burner and bring it to the forefront. Even if you're just tuning into the challenge by listening to the podcast, you are a part of this alongside us. So let's kick this thing off with today's podcast episode on learning what the universe is trying to teach us, a lesson in self-awareness. And now a word from our partners. Speaking of manifestations, one major manifestation that has come through for me recently is Bond Charge's infrared PEMF mat. Their PEMF mat, which stands for Pulse Electromagnetic Field, 
is a magnetic energy mat that sends energy waves to work with your body's natural magnetic field and improve your overall well-being. Now, I originally heard of Penth mats back in the day. I used the first one at Lacey's Forest Retreat House, and I kind of didn't really think it was going to do anything at first. And when I laid on this mat, I'm telling you, my whole body just relaxed. My nervous system relaxed, and I fully was able to calm down. Fast forward a few years later, one of our absolute favorite companies, Bon Charge, has launched their own Pemf mat, and it is fully loaded with all the best biohacking techniques you can imagine. So not only do they have multiple frequency settings, one for delta waves to improve deep sleep, one for grounding and earthing that is in the frequency of Schumann's resonance, which is the earth's magnetic field frequency, one for alpha waves to increase calm creativity, one for beta waves for logical thinking, conscious thought or meditation, and one that cycles through all four to really align all different parts of your body. But that's not all. They also have red, near infrared, and far infrared light wave frequencies. You've heard me talk about this before, but red light therapy can be so impactful for muscle soreness, tension, pain in the body, detoxification, and so many more things. It is also packed with tourmaline gemstones, germanium gemstones, and amethyst crystals, which all help to balance your mood, keep you calm, activate spiritual awareness, open intuition, and attract positive ions from your body to keep you in that balanced state. Like I said, this thing is fully loaded. So once we received it, we unloaded it into our living room and it honestly hasn't left the floor because I find myself jumping on it multiple times a day when I want to meditate before the start of my day or when I'm needing to process and do a DI. It helps to take me deeper, calm my body, calm my nervous system. It is so good for meditation practices. It just helps you go a lot deeper. And when you are needing grounding breaks throughout the day, it is fantastic. So if you're interested in trying out any of the Bond Charge incredible biohacking products, this holiday season, they're offering their massive 25% off wide sale where you can head to bondcharge.com and the 25% off code will be auto applied to your entire order. Hurry while stock and supplies last and on checkout, be sure to mention that you heard about it from the expanded podcast. All right, on to the episode. Lacey and I are here today to help you understand what is the universe trying to teach me. We did a survey to kind of learn what you guys were looking for in this upcoming end of year manifestation challenge. And one of the number one things was, how do I understand my patterns and what the universe is trying to teach me? And so We've been starting to release content earlier this year, especially with our rut, rock bottom, next level magic dark quiz. So you guys can see, okay, what phase am I in? And the first week of the challenge, which kicks off this coming Monday, November 13th, is really taking inventory of what lessons and whisperings the universe has been trying to get your attention with so you can learn the lesson, change your behaviors, change your neural pathways, and then manifest what you want. Yes. This is going to be an exciting episode to dig into because I feel like, especially this year, we've been kind of covering and slicing up different parts of the process and kind of dancing around this. But I would say that finding your patterns, learning how to read your patterns is actually the genesis of this work. That was what I did. I literally figured out holy shit, like every time before manifestation comes through, there's a magic dart. You know, I like, that's how I figured out this process. So becoming your own pattern reader. At that point, I feel like manifestation becomes second nature. There's still navigating and and work, but there it's like, you can see clearly what's happening and it takes a lot of the charge out of it. It makes it more palatable. So I think this episode will be really, really inspiring for people. And I think it's such an incredible way to start kicking off this challenge to get people motivated by this, looking at things in a new way. So one of the things I was thinking about is like why understanding your patterns and why understanding what's happening is such step one, really, of the manifestation process, because Unless you understand what's coming up for you, what's a test, what's a ping, what actions you need to take, what you need to do when, what your programming is, you're not assessing 
the landscape through a clear lens. I was thinking also about when Dr. Tara was consulting with us on the four steps of reprogramming, the raised awareness, that's step one. We have to really bring to the surface what is happening, what the root belief is, what the dynamic is that's playing out. And the one thing, as I was doing some research on self-awareness in general, I found this stat and I found it, I was telling Lacey before it recorded, I found this stat a few months ago and it was like, this has to get shared on the podcast and I saved it in my pings list. And I was like, I don't know when, but if this feels applicable to stuff coming up, I'm going to add it. And now I'm like, yes, this is the exact stat we needed to hear. But there was a study done by Tasha Yurik and huge research team. It was published in Harvest Business Review. She wound up writing a book around everything she found from this study. But everyone listening right now, do you consider yourself self-aware? I feel like I do. I'm sure you do too, Lacey. I do. Yeah. 95% of people would say they're self-aware, but in fact, only 10 to 15% actually are. And so now everyone listening is probably like, wait a second. I'm definitely in the 10 to 15%, for sure, I'm in that self-aware group. But I'd be curious, when you look at all aspects of your life, are you all the most self-aware? And really what that means, if you are the majority of people who aren't, quote, self-aware, it's do you have blind spots? And are you willing to look at those blind spots and to investigate them, get curious about them, and not let them rule you? How do you perceive self-awareness, Lacey, and how have you seen that work with your manifestation practice? To me, self-awareness is uh, layers of consciousness. The more that we integrate from shadow and wounds, because I think those are what are created to protect us from our awareness, because the awareness is so painful. Yeah. That's why we we created shadows, you know, in general for people who may be first-time listeners, you know, it's the philosophy that when you're growing up and you're experiencing pain, shame, and trauma, you begin to create these onion layers, these facades of yourself, the things you had to do to survive and be loved, right? Because as a child, especially super young, your whole survival system relies on your caretakers. Like you can't feed yourself, clothe yourself, et cetera. So you adapt yourself to what they deem lovable, not lovable for exactly who you are. So therefore, All of the work we're doing in here, of course, and most of the work surrounding most therapy and neuroscience is how do we get back to that authentic state of being? How do we get to know that authentic state of being? Because that authentic state of being is pure consciousness. It's pure awareness. However, we have all of these onion layers that are blocking it for safety and protection for us, where many of us don't need them anymore. And in fact, that is the journey of manifestation is to start peeling them back to get back to who you truly are, who you truly were born as before you experience pain, shame, and trauma. So I find that self-awareness for everyone is a level of consciousness. Each time you peel back that onion layer and you really integrate it and it's no longer painful for you, meaning that you can talk about it without charge, you can feel into it without a ton of charge, there's a lot of healing around it. It doesn't mean that it didn't exist and it's gone forever, but it means that there's integration, there's forgiveness, there's a healing around it. That's when we become more self-aware of that aspect. So I would say... I have a ton of blind spots still. We did a whole a whole series on this <laughs> earlier and we certainly have some tools that'll be looped into this challenge as well as what we're talking about on the speaking tour. I have so many still, but I also have a deep level of the things that I have healed that are I'm really self-aware on. Like there's some aspects that I am. So to me, intuitively, I feel like that percentage just rises each time you unblock and integrate that awareness. What would you say? The only thing, and I love, love, love your definition. I think that's spot on. The only thing I'd add is I recognize the more self-aware I become, the more I feel like I'm sitting at a neutral perspective. I'm like, ah, I can see that side and I can see that side and I can see why that might be happening. I could see why, and I'm not attaching black or white thinking. I'm sitting very like neutrally looking at it like, oh yeah, I could see why that, that, and that connected with this. That's integration. 
that is consciousness. Because when we are feeling those charges, those reactive states come up, triggers, that's what we talk about this all the time in the brand, when we're triggered, that's something that we aren't unblocked and integrated in yet. However, like when we integrate something, I talked about this a lot on the episode not long ago, where I talk about my process episode with manifestation. I talk about like my mom's alcoholism, et cetera. There's not a ton of charge left around that. Certainly when I talked about, you know, witnessing my younger brothers growing up with an alcoholic mother, I still have that because that's guilt for me. For me personally, I should have done more. I should have been there more for them. However, I wasn't healed enough to do that. However, when I talk about like her addiction or her, what she does or her patterns, it's, it's, there's no charge attached to it. So exactly what you just deduced, which is so clear for people to digest, that is integration. That is lack of shadow. That is lack of trigger. When we talk about you've integrated your shadow, that's it. It's when you can watch a news line, no matter how triggering it's seeming, But you can also have multiple perspectives and you can have some sort of neutrality. You can have some sort of strategy around it, critical thinking around it. That means that something in your trauma that you've experienced personally isn't being triggered uh, or shame that you've experienced. And so to me, that is levels of consciousness, levels of self-awareness that one can have because they're not feeling they need to be protected from that anymore. And I would say that We've done so many episodes in the past of shadow and losing that, those triggers that rule us, that run us, that make us so reactive. Those are signs of of lack of integration yet, uh, which is, again, just a journey. And someone even hearing that in this moment could be reactive to it. But that's a perfect example of the lack of self-awareness there only to save you from pain. It's only a protection mechanism. So I think you deduce that so perfectly. So, so important to name. Really, it's not a place of avoidance of emotion because I also think there's this idea in people's head that when they're at that neutral place, that they're like, oh, well, I never get sad about this or I'm never mad about that. It's understanding, wow, okay, I'm feeling a little bit of grief come up about this. I'm feeling a little bit of sadness here. Let me go and explore that emotion and process that emotion and sit with that before oh, that emotion popped up, I need to react upon it. Or it must mean this, this very sort of rigid thinking method instead of saying like, okay, this thing is making me feel like this. Let me process it. Can I look at the other side? Could there be another emotion even there? That's, you know, the opposite of it that I'm also experiencing. It's it's holding everything within the human spectrum. Yeah. I think about that with the work that I do with dogs on the youth list, for instance. There's a lot of integration I have around that. And so when I'm seeing it, I'm like, oh, man, this dog is probably going to be put down. Like the odds are high. It's painful and it's sad and there's stuff coming up for me. But I'm still able to share on my platform and express with people in a non- frantic way in a, in an inspiring way, in a way like this could be your familiar, you know, and that just show that's a really good example of what you're saying, like that you can hold it all at the same time, but have strategy and consciousness and not confrontational reactional states around it. In the study that I referenced in the beginning, and we'll link the study in the article uh, in the show notes, because it's definitely an excellent read. And they found that there was two types of self-awareness, internal and external. So internal, they said, represents how clearly we see our own values, our passions, our aspirations, how we fit into an environment, reactions, including our thoughts, feelings, beliefs, strengths, weaknesses, and our impact on others. And they found that internal self-awareness is associated with higher job, relationship satisfaction, personal, social control, happiness, but also could be negatively related to anxiety, stress, depression, because the more we know, the more we might ruminate on it, self-criticize, all of that as well. And I thought this was really interesting that they paired the thoughts, feelings, behaviors with that increased relationship, personal, social, overall happiness. Because if you think on manifestation front, when we have beliefs that are integrated, we can accurately look at them. We can feel our feelings, we can reprogram in a deep imagining hypnosis, journal on it, then take actions that may be aligned with what we want, then we can have those material results in real life. I love that. Absolutely. 
Okay, and the other piece was the external self-awareness. So this is understanding how other people view us in terms of those same factors. And the research that they found shows that people who know how others see them are more, more skilled at showing empathy and taking others' perspectives. So the example, a lot of the study also focused on like leadership and in the workplace. And they said for leaders who see themselves as their employees do, the employees tend to have better relationships, feel more satisfied with them and see them as more effective in general. And so what I'm thinking here is this is where the accountability buddies come in. Like when we say, find someone who is doing this work with you, find someone that you feel is safe, who has your best interest, who is your highest good. Can you speak to them about having real dialogue of your blind spots? Because it's so hard to explore your blind spots when you have all these protector parts kind of coming up, trying to shield you from even witnessing them. So that's where this external self-awareness, which takes things really to another level and helps our relationships, helps our careers, our any, any type of relationship, friendship, family, romantic, et cetera, when we can have those that we trust around us reflect back and say, hey, you kind of do this and you might not see it and it might be coming from this place, here's where one blind spot might be is going to just change the game. And, and I was saying this to the team when we were coming up with different things for the challenge. I was like, where do you guys turn? Like, who do you talk to about this work? You know, do you have a group? Do you have one-on-one, whatever? For most people, they invited a friend in to do it, and then they're talking about it with that friend. For the challenge kicking off, we haven't started yet. We start on Monday. If you are like, I'm really committed to this challenge, I'm so excited to you know, maybe it's your first time, maybe it's your fifth time you've done this with us, manifest, discover this new version of self, ask a friend, have them join you, go through this stuff together. Even if they're starting at completely square one, they know nothing about it, their entry point can be this challenge. They don't have to do another workshop first. They can literally start with the challenge, but having that other person, especially we have a blind spot teaching in the challenge, reflect back with someone like, does this feel accurate? Even with the quiz, So many people were like, I'm definitely this in the quiz, but also I really checked the boxes for this other thing. I'm like, gosh, I wish you had a friend sitting there with you when you answered to kind of check you and be like, are you sure that's where you're at? Or is that where you think you want to be at? You know, that's the fun thing that we're creating in the challenge as well for when you are really doing the blind spot work, you know, and it comes down to finding which archetype you are, as we've been talking about for a few months, you know, we created these really specific three archetypes to help you determine your blind spot. And we're going to put out like a really special way of answering questions because we noticed that on the speaking tour that people don't actually have concrete self and awareness of what archetype they really are in. So I wonder, yeah, we'll have to create better tools for people to get just clear. But like you're saying, whenever you have that reflection with somebody else, it just really speeds up the process. And I think there is something that you see yourself in a certain way, but having that reflection from, again, it's it's not someone that you think is going to be critical or judgmental or projecting their stuff on you. It's the kind, loving friend that has your best interest. If you can get reflection back from that person, you're in such a good spot with connecting with all of your manifestations because it will be so, so clear where the spaces are you need to move things around. And they had this incredible graphic. I'm going to read through them quickly here, but they kind of ranked like someone who has low external self-awareness, low internal, and then the phase is going out. So the person who has lower external self-awareness, lower internal, they don't know who they are yet, what they stand for, how their relationships see them. And as a result, they feel stuck, frustrated with their performance and relationships. So I even think of that person as like someone who's in the rut, when they're like, who am I? What do I need? And then from that point, how do I want to be in the world? You know, how do people see me in the world with that and getting really clear? And then moving over on that chart, high external self-awareness, but low internal, they're like the people pleasers. They can be so focused on appearing a certain way to others that they overlook what matters to them. They make choices that aren't in service of their own success and fulfillment. So this is, I mean, really like one of the blind spot archetypes that will find the empathizer. And you'll learn more how to navigate through that in the challenge. And then going up on that scale, so they have high internal self-awareness, but low external. They're clear on who they are. 
but they don't challenge their own views or search for blind spots by getting feedback from others. And that can limit their relationship success, their career success, whatever that is. So that's why having that accountability, if you have the internal self-awareness and you have the accountability to kind of check you, amazing. And then you get into the high self-awareness, high external, which is you know who you are, you know what you want to accomplish and seek out what you value. You have people's opinions that you value where you're not afraid to get feedback from. And that's when you truly realize the benefits of self-awareness and honestly, where you manifest. Yeah. And I wonder how can we direct people right now to find their accountability buddies? Let's say you're about to sign up, you are signed up, you're in the pathway. What is a perfect model for them to try to find those accountability buddies before this Monday? Yeah. So one, I would say, look at the friend groups that you do feel safe in already, where you already have a level of trust and dynamic and invite them into the challenge, have them join. Two, if you're like, okay, I don't really have anyone in my circle who wants to do that. Is there someone else in the community? When you join the challenge, there's a section called community group. You can join in there. And there is a little, they're called circles on the left-hand side saying people searching for an accountability buddy. Go in there, post about who you are, what you think represents you, what you might be looking for in accountability buddy, what you're manifesting, what you might need help with, what dynamics. I would also say as people are in there searching for other people for their accountability buddy, think about, and it's like this cycle of sort of giving back in a way. Is there someone in there who's manifesting something you already called in? Can you then help be their mentor and help navigate and guide them because you now know exactly the pain points of what it's like during that manifestation process. And then likely they might have manifested something or understand a dynamic that you might have a blind spot in. So I think that's a good indicator of how you can sort of find someone that is a good match for you in that sense. I agree. And we say this, or we have said it for the last two challenges, This is one thing that will absolutely speed up this process because the whole intention of the challenge is to have you manifesting by 2024. So like we're going to go through all of the groundwork you need to go through in order to connect with that manifestation in 2024. And if you have, like Jessica's saying, this accountability buddy that you nail down and find that you feel safe with it, that you feel like they are integrated enough to really call out, like, actually, I think you're in this phase. No, I think you're in a rut. This could be your archetype. This, This sounds a little bit more like it to just keep you on track, keep you anchored and keep you seeing the ball, it's just going to happen so much faster than if you're kind of loosely and unself-awarely drifting through things, Uh, especially listening to all the stats that you've been talking about. If you're like, oh, I am really high external, but very low internal. You know, if you're if you're identifying with the fact that you may not be in that 10 to 15 percent of self-awareness, this will really, really help that process speed up. On a community note, the fact that we do need community's reflection and other people's reflection to really understand ourselves on a deeper way, I think is so beautiful. Like we've we've heard from episodes of Dr. Tara even, we're wired to be in community with one another. It's so good for our souls, our being, all of those things. And what a cool way to be in community to share about what lessons are coming up, what patterns are coming up and how you're navigating all of that. Yeah. all probiotics are created equal. There are a million different products on the market promising to fix, rebalance, restore, reset your gut microbiome and gut barrier. But how many of them actually do? So many are not grounded in science. And that is why we are such fans of Seed's Daily Symbiotic. They are a two-in-one pre and probiotic capsule that actually reaches the gut. They are the most science-backed probiotic on the market. Their team of experts, some of which who even coined the original term probiotic, are rigorous about their research, testing, and the quality assurance of their product. Probiotics are fragile and sensitive to heat, oxygen, light, moisture, which makes it really hard for them to fully get to the part of the digestive tract that they support the most. That's why Seed created the VitaCap. It's their proprietary capsule and capsule delivery system, which helps get 100% of the probiotic strains to the part of the digestive system that impacts it the most, which is why Seed is such an effective probiotic. 
And that is why I make sure to take my seed two capsules first thing in the morning with a cup of lemon water to start off my day. It has made such a difference in my digestive health, my gut barrier integrity, my gut immune function, and it's even had an incredible impact on my skin. So if you're looking for a probiotic that actually works, You can use the code TBM for 30% off your first month supply of Seeds Daily Symbiotic. Again, that is code TBM for 30% off your first month supply. You can check out the link in the show notes or go to seed.com backslash TBM. One question I kind of want to maybe explain or break down more is understanding. So we're talking about self-awareness as it relates to patterns, right? And patterns of manifestation is like, these tests are coming up, these pings, these expanders, these sort of opportunities are presenting for me right now. What does that all mean? What is the universe trying to teach me? What would you say is maybe one tip or one place someone can start to think about how they all connect. Cause I think they're like, okay, here are all these things. I don't really know how they all connect or why, why they're coming up right now. Yeah. It's just called finding the thread. I think a really good practice to get into before going into next week, if you're like, oh, I just want to ruminate on something. Yeah. This, this conversation is really, it really has my mind going. One exercise that I absolutely love to do is to take the three bigger manifestations you've had come through in your life. Maybe you weren't even consciously calling them in. It's just like the three pretty profound things that have come through for you that have been meaningful. And I like to do a little bit of a timeline. And I I like to look at what test came up before that came in, you know, and if for somebody who might be new to this community, you'll learn about this in this challenge. But in this manifestation process, we always talk about the fact that one is tested. What you're being tested for is where you used to settle in low self-worth in the past. The universe is now testing to see, are you actually in the same self-worth energetic as the thing you're calling in? So for instance, if you had been a, a doormat in dating, like sleeping around, et cetera, but you really want want the one, that's a big jump, right? That's a big jump in self-worth. The person who has like the one, the thing come through usually tend to be pretty integrated, have a lot of high value of themselves. So that's what the universe is testing you on. So I like to do that. I like to look at how was I tested before this? Did I see to believe from other people or things? really crucial moments that uh, I met this person and in conversation, they talked about how they they got this one job, they were in this one uh, position, but then they jumped to this position. And these are the ways that it happened. And then four weeks later, something so similar in my career happened. So looking for what we call expanders, the thing that shows your subconscious that's never really seen to believe before that that's possible. So just kind of looking at those two things coming up. And then I like to also look at the ways that I've been triggered before a manifestation comes through. So the things that make me reactive or make me angry, sad, upset, scared, what are those? And, and then when you've kind of taken inventory on this, look at how they're all connected. So when we talk about finding your pattern, it's really finding the through line between everything that the universe is presenting in your reality right now that is very intentional, very purposeful for you to essentially unblock out of them. So the only reason, and we talk about this all the time, if you're new to this, the only reason the universe is doing this, like I mentioned in the beginning, is to get you back into that whole worthy, authentic state that you came onto the planet as before you experience pain, shame, and trauma. And in order to get back to that state, it's needing you to integrate all of that pain, shame, and trauma, or begin the process of it. So It's not by chance that all of these different things are presenting in your reality, which we tend to call your mirrors. It's not by chance. And so it's really important to get into that practice of looking at together, why is this test and this test and this test coming up? One could be in career that feels super different than the friendship that's like really triggering you right now versus the dog that keeps doing something in your life or or the aunt they are all connected and they're all pointing to something pretty specific that you're needing to get into your subconscious and unblock. And so that's how you start to read your patterns and read your tests. And most often than not, most of us have specific 
patterns that happen before we manifest. I can always feel when a manifestation is coming through. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is so obvious at this point. This, this, and this is happening. That, that, and that pretty much happened before the three bigger manifestations in my life. So that's a really fun little exercise. Simultaneously, I also like to take three events in my life that were kind of like rock bottoms. They were really big and painful. And to look at what was coming up before it, most importantly, what had I been asking for that I wasn't making action on? I wasn't taking action. I wasn't taking movement forward. So I like to think about my biggest heartbreak I've ever had at 25. Also the same time that I had to finally get like the really shitty waitressing job also the same time that I had to move into like a really expensive apartment in Los Angeles I never had to pay for. They were all very connected. And I I really look at like, what had I been asking for in my life? I was asking for huge things in my acting career, huge things. My self-worth wasn't in alignment with those things. My subconscious wasn't expanded in those things. But the universe is sitting here being like, yeah, I want to get you close to those things. And some of them are orbiting you. So I'm going to need you to do the work to step up really fast to get there. I didn't get that memo because I wasn't reading patterning or manifestation yet. It would take me many years to figure that out. But they were all very connected and it was very divine. Like it it wasn't by chance that rock bottoms were happening all around my life at once. It was very much the universe being like, these things are orbiting you and they want to come through in a really specific way, but you have your work cut out for you to get there. So that's just kind of my overview. If you've never done this work and you're just curious about patterns, look at the last three big manifestations you've had, whether it was conscious or unconscious that you were calling them in, kind of take some inventory. What happened that was similar in all of them? Simultaneously, the three bigger rock bottoms in your life. What were you asking for around that time? You're going to start to see clearly that things are pretty connected and that you have a pattern. Yeah. Yeah. I think too, when you, especially we have a lot of these journal prompts in the monthly check-in and we're going to have them as our yearly check-in in in this week of the, the first week of the challenge. But when I'm looking at them and it's like, what is the through line? What's the thread between all of these things? I'm not looking at like, well, this thing pissed me off and this thing, you know, like it's that it's much deeper than that. It's what is the story I'm telling myself about this situation? How do I feel about myself around this situation? Am I denying myself needs? Am I over giving? Is this reinforcing a limiting belief that I'm not good enough? What is the narrative that I'm taking away from these dynamics? Because that's really where you're going to hit that thread. It's not like, well, this happened on a Saturday and that one happened on a Saturday. So Saturdays are good. It's not like (laughs) superstitious like that. It's that really deep, okay, if I were to look at these and say, okay, yes, this happened. I felt like this after it happened. Why? What's the story I'm telling myself about this situation? You know, what's the what's the root there? Okay, where does that feel familiar? Got it. Now, what's the root here? What's the root here? What do all these roots have in common? Oh, I'm scared of this or I'm not putting myself out there or I don't feel good enough. It's reinforcing that I'm just not good enough. And then Lacey, when you say, and you've said this so many times before, but I think this helps really put a clear example, the opposite is the medicine. So now all of your work and the challenge coming up is how to take whatever story, narrative, theme, root, whatever comes up there, how do you now put the opposite in? through the unblocking, through the expanding, through the aligned action, through every single step of this challenge. How do we prime your neural pathways in your subconscious to prepare for a new story that you now see those tests as opportunities to give yourself the opposite? And I think something really important to add to that, I think we have a whole episode on this, but a lot of people who are one of the archetypes you'll learn about in this challenge, they are like the big dreamers, the whatever, they'll say, oh, I see how the roots are connected and they point to this block. And then the opposite is the medicine, but they won't actually do the subconscious work and they'll just come and try to take the action. 
it will not have moved any energy. Therefore, the same thing's just going to keep popping up in your life. So like when Jessica was saying, like you found that root, the opposite is the medicine. How are you going to put that into the world through the unblocking, through the expanding, through the aligned action? No spiritual bypassing them or else you'll just find yourself doing all the same things in a different apartment, different job, different relationship, but still capped at the same level. Yeah. Because when we're doing that reprogramming work, we're getting to the source of why that narrative is there, why that belief system is there, why that has been your operating system for so long and healing it and creating that new neural pathway. And when we do that, then our actions are actually backed up by something, you know, then we're not just taking action, hoping for something different, but secretly still thinking the same things about ourselves. And that's like to tie up the whole conversation at once, you know, the self-awareness. If we don't find that root and address it on a subconscious level, then the integration and healing doesn't happen. Therefore, you don't have the consciousness around it. Therefore, you don't have the self-awareness actually around it anymore. And therefore, the universe is going to continue mirroring that one thing over and over because it's probably the main thing that's linked to blocking this particular manifestation from coming through that you're calling in. And the universe is like, until you get this, I cannot connect you with the manifestation. Until you integrate this and you are actually looping from a different self-worth, a different thought, a different emotion from a subconscious level rooted in your subconscious from that memory, from that experience, I can't connect you with this manifestation. So I just really want that to sink in. And and that really ties us back to the self-awareness piece. The more we unblock and integrate, the more self-aware we're going to become. Do you feel, and now I'm thinking about that internal self-awareness person who they overthink it. They become over analytical. They're like, well, what if it's this? What I, actually I have five blocks or I, it's this, 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 and this. And, and they make it more complicated. Mm-hmm. I see this in the community group a lot, or even when I get messages and questions where it's like every little, little piece of information, this whole thing. And I'm like, whoa, it's a lot simpler than this. Like, let's take a step back and get really clear on the bare bones of what is making that impact. Cause I think our brains are so intelligent. They want to create meaning and they want to create story and narrative. And so they start assigning meaning to all these things that it might not be helpful or it makes it more convoluted. Like any thoughts on how to just simplify? This is finding your pattern. You take mm-hmm. them all, all of those things you're giving meaning to and, and, you know, thinking have a sign and a signal and a whatever, get to the root. They're all connected. Most likely get to the root. What is the root memory, the root belief, the root dynamic? That's where the block is. So I think for those people that are like overanalyzing and thinking, the actual simplification is to tie it all together and get to the root the root, the root, the root. Like I like to always think about this one shadow that was a big, big shadow for me for a long time, you know, having come through to 20 year old parents who weren't wanting to get pregnant or have a kid. And then my grandma and my aunt had to help raise me and they certainly weren't signing up for that. And the big shadow word was a burden, the burden, like that was the root of so many fucking tests and things that were coming up in my life at that time. Subconsciously, I was walking around, and this was probably a lot of external awareness, that people pleaser thing. I was walking around unconsciously that I was looping and expressing out from my subconscious state to the universe that I'm actually a burden. And it was reflecting many like tests and things that were coming up. This was back in. 2016, 2017. And I remember when I unblocked that, the floodgates opened so much. It was before I put How to Manifest out. It was before I turned this into digital, you know, at the time. And and it was getting to that root shadow and integrating it. So that's an example of look at all of those things that are coming up and overanalyzing and this situation and that, and this is a sign from the universe or whatever. Write them all down. And what's the thread between all of them? Where does that root to? What was the memory? What was the shadow? What was the the most significant thing that I can remember, memory at the time, that created pain, shame, or trauma around this? That's where you'll start to find that root, that pattern. And what I love about 
what you're saying is we can have other smaller pain points above it that have come off that initial route. But what was the very first significant point where that was implanted? Because these are all branches off of that. And if we can get to that root source, then those branches are way less affected. And simultaneously, where's the expansion of the opposite is the medicine in the subconscious state? Where am I now looking? May it be on social media, putting a post in the community group, reading testimonies of the thousands that we have on the site. Where am I looking for that expander of someone who also used to have this wound, but has gone on to manifest the opposite of it, the medicine, the good, the the high self-worth version of it, the high self-worth life of it. So it's really unblocking on the subconscious level and finding the expander on the subconscious or showing the expander to your subconscious that this is possible. And then the part that people, the really analytical people get stuck on, taking the aligned action, right? Like in real life, your conscious state, which we'll get into all of that in the challenge, but getting back to finding the pattern, like you said it really well, it's taking the through line of everything and getting to the big root. Like if there's one thing you take away from this, get to that root, that root memory, that root experience, that root shadow word. And then one other thing I added here was like some journal prompts that you guys can start thinking about. And we have a lot of these that are going to be also in the challenge that you can play with, but just for some of the listeners to get a taste of what you'd be exploring, what are the reoccurring patterns that are coming up? So listing those all out, understanding what's happening there. One other question that could really help you is what benefits are you getting from staying in this pattern or dynamic? So I think so many times we're like, oh, it's because that person did this to me and blah, blah, blah. And I'm just stuck. I'm just stuck. You become unstuck when you realize how you may be somehow benefiting in some way from that dynamic. Now, the benefit could literally be it's what's familiar and I don't like uncertainty. Yeah, It could be as simple as that. You know, that could be the only benefit. Some people it could be well, it's scarier to sit in the rut, not knowing where to move forward, not taking action on anything, not committing to any part of my authenticity because I I don't know if I'll be rejected for that authenticity. Where is one part of you getting a piece of your needs met from that stuck situation or from the dynamic that you don't like? And then it's understanding, let me sit and reprogram. Let me find the root. Let me go through all of that process with our unblocking week, go through finding the expanders. And then when it comes to taking that action, okay, what are the actions that are backing up the new subconscious piece you want to enact and that you're desiring? Yes, yes, yes. And what can people look forward to in this week? What is the real outline people are going to be up to in this week kicking off? Yes. So day one is all inventory of how you've grown. We wanted to kick off with something good and exciting and also building our trust muscle of seeing really all of the growth that we've had. So whether you've been doing this TBM manifestation work or maybe you just- Listen to the podcast. Yeah. You listen to the podcast. You have grown. Trust me, you have grown this year. And so we have very intentional questions helping you really honor and celebrate yourself for a second to be like, whoa, I really did do that. Like I have stepped through this fear. I did put myself out here. I did overcome that extremely challenging situation or I'm still in process of recovering from it or going through it. Let's celebrate ourselves a little bit. Day two is all about the stuff we're talking about today. What is the universe trying to teach you? What is the root and the root that's coming up right now in the last few months? What has been the message this past few months that the universe is like, this is what I want you to think about when you are preparing for this new manifestation, new version of self on the other side. Then we have our authentic self and authentic self DI, where we're really going to understand what did your child self love when you were a kid? That starts pointing to your authentic self. And then we'll do our authentic code. We have a new exercise in there. I know people get so lost. I'm like, I don't know the right word. We have a little word exercise that we added in there that'll make it so, so clear. And then 
to really be intentional about what is presenting, we have the brand new Sleep Deep Imagining, which we have Delta wavelengths in there. So it'll help you drop into a a sleep and restful state, but also it will have you kind of take inventory awareness of what came up that day. So you're just like, okay, I'm aware and then release it so you can sleep without anxiety and fear or rumination on those things. And that's just a little tool we're going to add in there that you guys can use at any time during this challenge to really get clear on just patterns that might be presenting as you move along this challenge. And to let them go, right? Mm -hmm. Like let them go before, because that's often the anxiety, the stress can keep you up. And like the intention is to re-regulate so that you can just get in parasympathetic and go to sleep. (laughs) Thousand percent. Even with these eclipses that have been popping up, I've been waking up at like, I'm like, oh my gosh, my brain is just like on autopilot. Like, what about this? What about this? And I'm like, I need that sleep DI now. (laughs) Yeah, completely. I was going to say when you were like, you, even if you've just been living life, you've grown this year. And I'm like, there is no fucking way with those retrogrades we had this year coming into these eclipses that people have not been forced into growth. Like we all have some reflection that we can take away from this year for sure. I think that's one of the most exciting things too about the challenge this year is having a little bit more intentionality on we process a lot this year. A lot of stuff has happened. And whether you've done any internal work before or not, your life probably had a lot of changes and shifts. And so instead of just being like, okay, I changed, there was a lesson, there was a gift, there was something that we took with us from that change. Let's honor it. Let's look at it. Let's integrate it even deeper. So now going into this next year, we're that integrated self. We're that self-aware version of us. Love it. There are so many people out there settling for unfulfilling relationships or people who are stuck in toxic jobs, living in places and spaces that don't inspire them, and especially people who feel like they'll never be able to afford the things and the life that they truly desire. How do I know that? because it was me before I discovered that manifestation is actually a totally viable, scientifically proven method of creating the life you want. I'm Lacey, I'm the founder of To Be Magnetic, and if you're not familiar with us, we at TBM offer workshops that teach you how to manifest literally everything, from love, to money, to career, to beyond. Our courses are the most effective manifestation method on the market, and that's because of a secret that I discovered years ago about manifestation, which is you do not manifest from your thoughts. You manifest from your subconscious beliefs. So after decades of client research and input from leading doctors and therapists, we designed courses that help you rewire your subconscious mind to align with what you want to manifest. And the best part of all for any skeptic out there, our work is completely scientifically proven to work. Just ask the tens of thousands of members inside our Pathway membership, which gives you unlimited access to all of our workshops, tools, and offerings that you'll use over the course of a year. This includes workshops on inner child, shadow, boundaries, love, money, the infamous ruts, and the horrible rock bottoms, and so much more. And right now we have our biggest sale of the year going on where you can lock in the lowest rates to join our Pathway membership. You can find the link in the show notes. And when you are in the Pathway membership, you will have full access to our 2023 Manifestation Challenge. Okay, now back to the episode. Okay. And then we have two examples we can go through kind of quickly of just two people that were trying to distill down their patterns and we can kind of throw some info on them. So first person, what is energetically going on in my career right now? I'm a physio and the company I worked for in 2021 went under. I quickly got a new job, big test and left quickly after six months as it was not aligned. Through that job, I manifested my current job. 
I really like it. However, since I started, it has not been busy. I'm having to work some half days because of this lately and making less income due to this. On the side for the past year, I have been creating YouTube content and online courses with my ultimate manifestation being able to make enough passive income that I don't have to work in a clinic or can go down to two days a week max. I'm a projector and the nine to five is hard. In the last year, I've only made $50 passively, so I know I need to continue to work on that manifestation. I know I struggle with scarcity mindset and fear of being seen. What do you think is going on? Is this online portal because I need to unblock more, or is my ego wanting to be famous online to make enough so it won't come through because it's ego? Am I not busy at work because the universe is trying to push me elsewhere? What is it trying to teach me? I feel like... The fact that they said my ultimate manifestation, being able to make passive income so I don't have to work in a clinic and creating on YouTube and online courses, that feels like an authentic manifestation. I know they were kind of questioning like their ego in it all, but it sounds like they don't want to have a rigorous, constant work schedule. And having the passive income really allows them the lifestyle that they want. That feels authentic. So I'm not feeling like it is ego, but I do wonder in the blind spot relation, the YouTube content online courses, is that 100% the portal in which you, you think this passive income can come through? And this is where having an accountability buddy could take a peek at like, okay, let me look at your YouTube content or online courses or what have you been putting out? And that accountability buddy could then say, wow, you really have a gift at talking about this, like share more on that. Or, huh, I wonder if instead of an online course, you make it into a book. Or I don't know, like, is there something else that an accountability buddy could kind of take a peek at and see, is this because your fear of being seen is coming up? Is this because the scarcity mindset? If you're not having income coming in that portal, then something's blocking it. My first just channeling hit on it is she doesn't have enough expansion. I get that she has the expansion that she sees how people do this stuff, but she hasn't had a close enough expander to, especially if she has a scarcity mindset. I would say that that she has the expansion, like she sees how people create online businesses. She hasn't seen to believe that it's possible for her. She sees the structure and how it happens, but her subconscious with a scarcity mindset doesn't fully believe that it's possible for her yet. That would be my biggest thing. And like all the things you're saying for sure can be factors, but they seem like the symptoms that could be going because... The way that that comes through, like as a pattern reader, I'm putting the patterns together. She got the job that feels aligned and right, but she's not getting the client she needs. And then she's making the content for the things she wants to create, but it's not bringing the money she needs. So if we put those two to- things together, her needs aren't being met, which means if we reduce that down into the root, there's something there in her subconscious that her needs don't deserve to be met. That creates the, you know, scary scarcity mindset. She has to figure out what that is. And then furthermore, I can tell she's expanded enough through her education and expanded enough through seeing people create these businesses and have these things. But there's something tied to that scarcity mindset root there, the not getting her needs met, that also hasn't expanded so specific to her, her inner child, that she too deserves this type of abundance. That most importantly, that she too deserves this type of income for this output of work that's very little. So those are, those are the things. If I were reading the patterns in this, that's how my mind would work to that. Well, I think even having those two big things, what is the root of that? You have a job that is everything you want, but it's slow. So it's not hitting your financial needs. And then you have this other thing where you're putting things out there, but again, not hitting the financial needs. So it's like discerning down, well, why don't I feel like I can't meet my needs or my needs don't need to be met or they don't deserve to be met or it's not possible for me. Like what is that root that ties between it? I think is going to be really helpful. So if anyone out there is trying to distill down their version of it, okay, what is the story that I am believing about myself because this situation is presenting. Yeah, that's how I would look at it. 
And it's interesting too, because the job that's going slow, she's having to work some half days or less days. The universe is almost like, here, look, I'll give you more time. Yeah. But you don't, you still don't believe you deserve the money to go with it. Mm -hmm. That's exactly, that was such a good highlight and point, a hundred percent. And then our last example here, hey all, I'm calling in a bridge to help me financially. Funds are drying up. I did the quiz and it says I'm in the magic dark. I've been expanding, unblocking and actually taking actionable steps in applying for jobs. I don't know if I'm in a magic dark though, because I've done the rock bottom workshop three times, the rut one time and finishing inner child, although lots of procrastination in finishing this one. Lots of the jobs coming through that I've applied for and then nothing, radio silence or huge delays in feedback or anything coming to fruition from the recruiters. A potential job was in line for starting Monday and now they said the start date is for the end of November. As desperate as I am to start a job right now, I'm feeling equally frustrated and impatient. What are the energetics of this? I want to understand what's happening, but I can't seem to catch a breath. Mm, Yeah, I was feeling into that one. It's so interesting because the magic dark, in my mind, I was like, is she being tested? And it sounds like she's saying she is because the things she's applying for, they're coming around but it doesn't sound like she's being offered them. Am I right? Aside from this one. This, she did have one come through that was offered and that she was going to start Monday and she thought like, okay, this is the manifestation. And then they were like, uh, just kidding. The start date's November. Yeah. Which is the universe being like, mm, you tried to take something that isn't, that probably isn't the thing. It does sound like she's in a magic dark, but it, what it sounds like to me And I do think a bridge in her specific uh, scenario is a really good idea. So what it sounds like to me is that she is taking the right aligned action. She's definitely been unblocking and expanding. However, there's a piece there that she's still not fully expanded enough that makes her totally sure enough about who she is and what she has to offer. And that's where the like, the money, the thing, and the universe is like, here you go, but no. So to find the pattern here, the thing she's applying for, they are definitely calling her for interviews. The thing she was offered, because she's getting desperate potentially, she took it and she was supposed to start, but the universe is like, no, like you weren't supposed to, you probably weren't supposed to take this one, but you're feeling desperate. When somebody's at this edge, they are in a magic dark, they are in blocking, expanding and taking aligned action. What would be kind of equatable to this is if I were to say, I'm never going to do a press piece like this again because it just backfired or they got my words wrong or whatever. A good example, I hope I can say this, but like somebody reached out from the New York, New York Times when we were, you know, going to New York and and I've just been feeling in my body, I was like, press just doesn't feel great to me anymore. Maybe, maybe later, you know? And so if I had been like, but it's the New York Times and it's the this and the that not being fully sure in what I'm wanting and my conviction and then going, okay, but then it gets taken away. So this one's a tricky one to show people with the amount of information we have of how to find the pattern that probably you and I know that's happening because it's so nuanced. Yeah. I'm trying to think to like sort of how we did with that first one, breaking that down. So First off, understanding and labeling one of the biggest things that happen in the magic dark is you're asked to double down on trusting yourself and your worth more. And so a couple of things that are pointing out, she's done rock bottom three times, rut once, finishing inner child, procrastinating that a lot. There's something of like, I have to be the good student, do all the things. Energy I'm feeling from that. And so, okay, I have to do all the things because I'm not ready yet there must be some other workshop or some other DI that I need because I don't, it's like grasping for breadcrumbs a little bit. And then the, I've taken the action, lots of jobs coming through, I've applied and then nothing radio silence or huge delays and feedback or nothing coming to fruition. So again, when you're putting all this output out there, the same way you're putting the output to do all the workshops again and again, like multiple times, putting all the output out in the jobs, what is the root? what story are you believing about yourself that you have to put so much output and then you're essentially ghosted? You put all this output in the unblocking thing, but 
you're still not hitting the root there. Okay, well, I believe I have to really prove how good I am because I don't really feel that good yet. Like her medicine is she needs to take her power back. Like yes. that's really it's the opposite. And so her intuition of wanting to get a bridge job is so spot on. Obviously, yes, to help float our finances until this happens, but more so, it's actually more so spot on so that she can just fucking get grounded and take her power back and not dog paddle towards all of these opportunities. Yeah, like it's both situations. You're pulling down to that, like, I don't I don't feel there yet. And you have to get to a place where you're like, even that first day in the challenge where it's like, how have I grown? Girl, if you are doing all this work, I promise you, you have unblocked enough to get your job in. Like there is no way that you have been doing this work and nothing has clicked. It has. You're just not trusting that it's clicked. And it's not integrated fully. Like it's Mm -hmm. still integrating. And and when I say that energetically, it's like intellectually, it's changing. Yes. But your trust, your body, your empowerment hasn't integrated yet. The thing hasn't clicked where you're like, fuck yeah, I'm worth this, but not in a external egotistical conscious way in a subconscious way. It hasn't fully integrated and clicked yet. And that's where also the accountability buddy comes into play because then you can say like, Hey, I did all of this. Like, what do you see from me? What do you see going on? What are my blind spots here? I mean, you could probably see in your cover letter, how you're speaking about yourself. Are you sending cover letters that are from a place of empowerment? Or are they like, I did all this, 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 you know, like, are they really dog paddly? Sit into your trust of who you are and that that is so good enough. That's really what you want to cultivate. And, and the universe is really trying to teach you, you don't need to prove yourself. You don't need to overextend. You can be discerning. And we're shaking that with the financial funds drying up, but they're not dried up yet. And you're taking all the right steps to get closer to your job or your bridge. I miss this. It's kind of what we were doing with the unblocking, but it's like where we get the concise, I think it's just helpful for people. And then our job is to figure out how to make it like universal that people are really taking away. But I miss this. It's so fun to read on people's energetics. So fun. And the two people, because I took this from the community group, are going to be thrilled to get this in my stack too. Good, good, good. So excited there. And yeah, I, I think this is a lot for everyone to take in to really process and think about where you are on this scale, but it's so exciting and empowering. We are going to walk you through all of the tools to get there. If you take one thing from this episode, find your accountability buddy for this challenge. It is going to make a world of a difference, help catch you and see things that maybe you can't see yourself. And I'm just so excited to kick off the challenge. Yeah, same here. I can't wait. We'll see you all in there. Yes, we're going to be doing it alongside you. I'm excited to share what's coming up, what our authentic code is. We have a lot of activations we're going to be promoting on socials and in the community group. So be sure to tune in. And email. Yeah. If you're not signed up, via yeah, email. Oh yeah. Lacey sharing like her in real life week over week, what's coming up there. Lacey, what is one intention or thought you have to just like set people into motion for this challenge for everyone who signed up or ready to go? What is one inspirational piece that they can think about? Like, okay, wow, I'm really going to think about this for that challenge. Honestly, I think that this one is probably the most robust one that we've created in the sense that there's a lot of inventory happening. We have your archetype you're finding, you're taking your upfront inventory, you're figuring out where am I right now with your rock bottom, your right, et cetera. So maybe this is just like my Capricorn moon, but I find that inventory like pattern reading, they're the same thing. They just direct you and and harness the energy so much quicker. And so that's something that I really love about this challenge is there's just a lot of inventory happening. It's not loosey goosey, not that any of ours have been, but there's not a lot of places to like get lost. So that's why I love your call out to the accountability partner, which is usually my big thing when, before we kick off, I'm like, get your accountability partner. But what would be the thing of inspiration? Find your magic this season. 
find your magic again. Everybody is so stressed in real life about, I need this, this, and this, and this. Well, let me tell you from somebody who has manifested every single thing I've wanted in my life, every single thing. And, and it's a really privileged place to talk from, but I worked really fucking hard to get here and manifest everything I've wanted in life. It doesn't fix everything. It doesn't make you happy. It doesn't bring you all the joy that you think. When I have this, I'm going to be that. Like, it's going to be fine. I'm still stressed. I'm still a mom. Like, I, all of the things, a little integration for sure has been happening. But I guess my big thing for people going through this who are calling in really special things in your life, find the magic. This is the time of autumn. It's the time of winter. It is the time of dying and, and inwardness and get magic. And until we start to find our magic along the way, even when you manifest that thing and all of the things you want, you're going to still be in the same stress, like the same thing that got you there. Of like, if I have all this, then I will be happy. So that's what I guess I'm really, really wanting to inspire people and myself this season. What is the shit that even got you into this? It was probably magic. Find those rituals, find those, those self-care moments, find whatever your version of magic is. Nature, whatever, get into your magic along this way. It's going to bring the energy through this challenge. Get out of the rigidity, get out of the scarcity, get out of the need and, and go through these steps in community with us and find your magic. That's so funny you say that because when I was talking with the team last week, I was like, I wish we could call the accountability buddies like find your coven, you know? Yeah, how do you, totally. How do, you, how do you make it this beautiful, magical support system? Like yes. the work can be so fun. It doesn't have to be this black and white thinking rigid process. Like you're learning and cultivating all of these things about yourself honor them, like light a candle when you journal, make it a ritual. We added a few different rituals in there. In the episode, we have a Taylor Page. She gives us a ritual to do for authentic code. Like there's so many ways that we can start to cultivate that ritual practice that feels fun. Like we're tapping, we're tapping into the universe. We're tapping into this infinite source. Feel the power of that. It's huge. That's exactly a hundred percent. What would be your thing to tell everybody? The thing that keeps saying, like ringing in my mind is don't wait. Mm -hmm. You don't have to wait to have your dream life. You don't have to wait to like be as good as your expander or be on that pedestal. Like stop pedestalizing the manifestation, the expander, just start living it right now in all the ways you can. And don't think that what you desire is so far out of reach. When you put these tools to work and to practice, it's going to come through. It's ready. Let's go. Let's get it. You're here for a reason. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Don't wait. I love that. I think that's so, so awesome. Thank you so much, Lacey. This has been such a fun episode. I'm so excited for the challenge. I know. Uh, I'm so excited. We'll see everyone on the other side. Yay! I hope you all enjoyed that episode as much as we did. And if you're starting to get a feel for this to be magnetic manifestation process, but aren't completely sold yet, let me point you to some of our free offerings. You can check out the expanded podcast episode called how to manifest anything you desire where Lacey, the founder and I break down exactly what this process is all about. You can check out The Motivation, which is our testimonial library with thousands of testimonials of people who have manifested wild things using this process. Or you could check out our free quiz to find out what manifestation phase you were in, the rut, the rock bottom, the next level, or the magic dark, and how you can navigate. Enjoy. We'll see you next week.